Do you feel overwhelmed by the demands of life? Do you feel like you're not enough to meet expectations? Do you instinctively know that there's more to life than just producing and consuming, but you don't know what to do to get it? I'm here to help you. This is the Dr. Cherie Show, and I'm your host, the mother of coaching since 1974. I help Fortune 500 companies, individuals and couples find happiness through emotional safety. I'll teach you what you need to do to have focus, empowerment, and to create emotional safety to carve out the path to your happiness and have the life you deserve. Let's get started. Hi there. I'm Dr. Sheree Carter-Scott. In my podcast today, I'm going to have somebody very special who you are going to love. Her name is Kim Seltzer, and she does the exact opposite of what I do, and we meet in the middle. (laughs) She is the person who does the charisma quotient. Isn't that cool? I love the sound of that. And she also helps people develop confidence, real solid confidence from the outside in. Now, you know that my tagline is that I'm the person who does the emotional safety. I help people find emotional safety. So that's the inside out. And so from outside in and inside out today, we're going to give you the whole enchilada. You're going to get the entire picture from the two of us. And so what I want to do is I want to invite, congratulate, and present to you Kim Seltzer, your friend with me today. Hi, Kim. (laughs) Hi. How are you? I'm great. And I'm really happy to have you on my show today. I think that you have something incredibly important to offer our our viewers and listeners, and I really appreciate you being one of my guests. Oh my God. Well, it's a privilege and honor to be here, and I know I can't wait for this conversation because I think so much of what you do and I do intersects, but in a different kind of perspective and way, so yeah. Exactly. So maybe you could give us a little bit of information about what got you started in this field of charisma quotient and outside in and confidence building for people. There must have been something that really sparked. I like, thank God you asked that because like sometimes I'll go on these shows and they won't ask for my story and I will have to actually like throw myself under the bus because honestly, I wouldn't be here if I didn't have my own story, if I didn't go through my own transformation because it really is like why I'm so passionate about doing what I do. I mean, Obviously, you know, being a therapist and a dating coach and an image consultant and all that was great, like professional background. But what really got me into this was um, my own story. And I will try to make this as as short as possible, but it really does relate to what we're going to talk about today. Because had you known me back then, Sherry, like it would have been a totally different thing. I would have said I, I approach things from the inside out. But what happened to me kind of shook my world and threw it upside down, and which is why now I work from the outside in. So back, you know, long, long time ago in a land far, far away, I lived in Chicago, and I, um, I, I lived like kind of a traditional life, right? I had, um, I had the husband, I had the dog, the kids, you name it. And I practice as a therapist, you know, for many years and I helped people. I, so I thought, and I'm sure I did, but it was just like, now that I know what I know, um, it's funny to look back, but then we all pick up and we move, you know, across the country here to La La Land, as I call it, LA. And I always joke, you know, I, I do what all the other people here do. We get a divorce, obviously joking, cause there are other issues going on in this little fairy tale. Right. But the truth be told was that that was my kind of pivotal moment. That was when the record stopped and my life completely changed as I knew it. So I'm looking ahead of me and you know, like when there's this fork in the road that happens sometimes, you you know, like, and you have a choice and which path you're going to take. I I kid you not, I was going down a really dark path and my clothes reflected that, right? Like I was the girl who at that moment in my life, under the covers in bed, depressed, wearing all black clothes. I still had my nursing bra on. 
<laughs> no, but you look really cute in black. Let me tell you. I did not look cute at the time. I, it, my clothes were like three sizes too big. I had the nursing bras on. I wasn't pregnant any longer. But it shows you where I was. Like I was so stuck. I was stuck in my clothes. I was stuck in my mindset. And here's the thing that was interesting about this moment is that I had a great support system. And, and like, again, I, th I thought I was doing all the inner work. I talked through it to death at nauseam. I could not get out of my own way, right? So what does a girl do when nothing fits her any longer? I, I got fed up. I said, you know what? I'm, I looked in the mirror and I said, I'm going shopping. I, I couldn't stand myself anymore. It just happened one day you woke up and you looked in the mirror and you said, I'm fed up. I mean, was there anything that was a catalyst to that moment? No, I honestly remember that that's how it worked. Because <laughs> I, you know, it was like sometimes you have to be ready to hear and see messages, right? And I think for whatever reason, it was that moment in time where I was so sick of feeling sorry for myself. I was sick of being in the victim mode and I was sick of my black clothes. And so I, I go shopping. This is the pivotal moment. And I go shopping and this um, personal shopper, she's watching me, right? And what am I doing? I'm pulling all the same clothes again. <laughs> I have the black and the three sizes, two sizes. It was my safety net, right? My cocoon. And this woman watches me and she comes over and she holds up this red dress. And she said, ma'am, I would have been watching you and I was wondering if you wanted to try on this. And it looked like three sizes too small. I said, that's really sweet of you, but that's so not my size. And that's really not my color. And she said with a really serious look on her face, that is your size, that is your color, try it on. Oh my God, isn't that amazing that the salesperson actually had the courage, confidence also, to look at you and say something that laser-like. It was so profound. And you know, like sometimes you have to be hit over the head with something. And again, I think I was ready to hear it, but I needed that. Like I needed somebody to really like, see me because yeah. I couldn't see me. Yeah. And so I took that dress and begrudgingly slipped it on. And like Cinderella, I twirl around, I look in the mirror and I like, bam, I just stood there staring at myself. I'm like, Oh my God, that woman's right. This, this is me. And I kept like looking at myself and, but you know, I hadn't seen me in so long. It was me, but I just hadn't like thought about me in that way. Yes that I bought that red dress that day and I walked out into the world and I, and I call it a costume because I, I still didn't totally believe it was me. So I had to wear it as a costume yes. until I realized there was this kind of symbiotic relationship that was happening between the outer and the inner. Because as I wore the dress, my confidence grew and I was getting validated and, and it was all like working together. Okay. And suddenly my life started changing and then I started doing makeovers on people and I trained with the top so, image consultant. I just blah, got, blah, blah. I need to go put on a red jacket because I can't talk. <laughs> Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay. Are you going to do it? Yeah. I love it. Okay, okay. But I want everybody to see the impact it has. Okay, this right is back. great. No okay. Okay. So now we're talking about the change from black to red. And I just got this message when you were talking. Oh my God. It's time to be able to just do it in the moment. And oh my God. When you're talking to people, that's what happens. So I want to be the living example of exactly what you're talking about. Okay. I just got a huge different impression of you. I'm just saying like, that was amazing. <laughs> just that color. And we're going to do a lot of talking about today and just the impact first impressions have on our confidence, the way people view us, and that determines how people treat us okay. and especially color. So you just demonstrated exactly what happened to me and how my life changed and what I do for people today. And so kind of that's what happened. And I realized there was so much more power and I could get at people so much faster by doing something that they could viscerally feel and see to put them into action. Because here's the thing, and I knew this as a therapist, there's so much going on up here. And I think 
I think we know a lot of stuff. I think we know in some essence what we need to do, but putting that into action and actually implementing it and execution part of it That's what is I was hard. Going to ask you is because you had this moment with the salesperson. She asked you about the red dress. You thought, no way. And she was really direct with you and you did put it on and something really changed like in Cinderella. Now, yeah. that's a moment, a defining moment when you had an aha experience, you had an epiphany, you went, oh my God, this is the new me. Now, you went from that moment into creating a whole industry practically of people coming to you because they felt emotionally safe with you to be able to help them find their color, their image, their confidence. And I want you to help us map out the steps because what you just said is that this is the hardest part for people. Well, how do I do it? What do I do first? Yes. How do I get there? And you've been so successful in this that I want you to help people with the, you know, the, the baby steps along the way. I love that you, first of all, asked that and you mentioned the baby steps because that is exactly where I start. You know, I, I actually just did a talk on this. I mean, I think one of the biggest reasons why people, well, first of all, there's two reasons why people don't change. One is fear, right? And, and for me as a therapist, it's important to understand, and this is the first step, is understanding people's journey and their story. I think that is what provides the emotional safety that you're talking about, mm -hmm. is having more of an understanding of where people come from. Because what works for you is different from somebody else who have different backstories. You know, like we all get triggered in different ways, We because we base it on our previous experiences. So, you know, for me, in order to provide that emotional safety, it's understanding where people have come from. That's the first and foremost. So that's when I put my therapist hat on, right? And help people. Is it actually mm -hmm. talking about their history, their background, where their, um, their, their underpinnings, their beliefs, their attitudes, their, the way they see the world, and then looking at where they wanna go in the future? Is that kind of the, the bridge between the past and the future? Yeah, some of it, you know, so what I do, probably what people experience in therapy is I always tell people, I want to know, <laughs> I want to know your life from when you were an embryo all the way up until now, because I believe our past is connected to the future and the choices we make, the patterns that get created. And it's not to dwell on it, but to understand it so we can push through it and create new habits, new patterns. So really that first sitting is the only time I kind of talk about the past and it's only to have an understanding of what can help people move forward. Okay. And that's the fusion for me with my therapy and the coaching and the image consulting intersect so that it's at that point that I determine how I'm going to help people. And that's where the charisma quotient, you know, formula comes in. And there's three kind of secret ingredients with that. The first is helping people with their style intelligence, raising your style IQ. <laughs> I don't think you style IQ. Maybe you can define it for us. Up to be honest, <laughs> I made it up because it kind of goes along with the other IQs that I work with. But you know, I was thinking about it: what we wear, how we present, the body language is so profound. You know, when we enter a situation, when it comes to first impression, I mean, ninety-three percent of communication is nonverbal. Ninety-three percent. So. I, right? So like what we say isn't even as important as how we show up. And that can create the path for where you want to go. Um, I'll give you an example, you know, after I go through my formula of what that kind of looks like, you know, with how I worked with a client in that. So I'm assessing kind of the outside first. It's like, what can I have somebody do that can get that immediate result? that immediate satisfaction, which isn't a lot these days, right? Like a lot of this internal stuff, we, we have to sit with and work through, which is just as important. I'm not saying it's not, but sometimes when you do something that's quicker, when you get that little quick win, so to speak, that increases your confidence. So that helps you go to the next level. So that's why I like to start with the outer and raising your style intelligence so that you gain that confidence moving forward. Then the second, let me just ask yeah. you a question, because the style confidence and, and style 
um, intelligence, that those are really new concepts for me. Because when I went mm-hmm. to school, I wore a uniform for 13 years. And oh. I never had that confidence at all. As a matter of fact, I'm always looking for a uniform. So I created a, a, a set of uniforms for myself so that I could be able to step into those and feel comfortable and safe and stable. So I guess I want to know um, if you're talking about that uh, confidence or um, how, do you, how do you help somebody define who they are? If, if like me, if I'd been wearing a uniform for all those years and then I just didn't know who I was physically and visually. So with someone like you, I would start with your language. See, this is why it's helpful to understand people's background. So now that I know that about you, I would probably start differently with you than I would somebody else. So I would probably use your language as uniforms. What if I were to help you get uniforms for the different parts of your life? You know, you need a professional uniform. Now let's look at your dating or your partnership uniform. Maybe you need a professional, you know what I'm saying? Because that's, that's how you think and that's where you come from. And so it's just helping you develop style in each of those areas. Now within that, I would, you know, teach you my 3C formula. So this is something that everybody can do. Everybody can do. We're dying to know. Three C's. I love using like three F's, three C's, because it's just easy to remember, right? It's yeah. chewable. Um, and so what that is, is knowing the cut of the clothes that flatter your body type. Yeah. And everybody has a body type. With women, there are five. With men, there are three. And I actually, if you go to my site, seltzerstyle.com, you can download a free body type guide and determining what your body type is. And once you measure yourself and you know... Yeah. You have to see yeah. your site again because it was too fast. Oh, sure. I didn't even catch it. So will you see? Oh my place? gosh. Please. Yeah, seltzer, seltzerstyle.com. Right. Like my last name, Alka Seltzer. No, seltzerstyle.com. Okay. Um, and I can even, if you want, I can provide a link for your okay. people. And, they, and then they can just click it and it'd be easy. Okay. Um, so for women, I have this guide. And for men, I have this man's fashion manifesto, which is, you know, men, men need this just as badly, if not more than women. But they have nowhere to like get this education from. Sure. So um Here's the thing and how it relates to your confidence is that once you know what clothes flatter your figure and what clothes to stay away from, it helps you feel more confident and body confident when you look in the mirror, when you move. I mean, we all have, and this is the second C, the confidence clothes. Like, I bet you there's an outfit in your closet that is probably like your go-to outfit if you had a social event or a professional event. And it's like pulling that outfit and determining what is it about that com- or that confidence clothes that you like. Is it something that you've been complimented in? Is it the color? Is it the cut? You know, so again, all of this is working towards that symbiotic relationship between the outer feedback that you're getting from your appearance and how it affects you in turn. Third, color. And you just demonstrated how amazing color can impact a viewer and how you're being seen. Like that color totally made you so much more vibrant. Anyone who's watching this right now, she looks amazing in this red. (laughs) And And actually, there's a lot of psychology with color. So people who are in business and they want to, like, I know you help a lot of people in businesses. There are certain colors to wear when you're trying to sell. There are certain colors when you're trying to demand authority. So, you know, understanding those aspects of your style intelligence can really help you with not just your confidence, but how you appear charismatically. Okay, so now you're showing up as this brilliant, incredibly capable, charismatic, profound woman who is like the answer to all of our prayers, including my husband's. But the question I have to ask you is, um, were there, were there any mistakes you made along the way? And would you be willing to share one of them with us? No, I never made mistakes. I was really perfect. (laughs) And (laughs) are you kidding me? This is how my whole business was born was based on my mistakes, right? Like I was this kind of nerd, right? Like going, I don't think so. Thinking, You're oh my God. Me. No, this is why I told you my story. Like if you saw me then you would not even know that it was the same person. Um, 
You know, I have a really funny story around this, and then I'll move into the second part of my formula because it kind of relates to it, mm. is that I, <laughs> I'll never forget when I first was introduced to um, my first single girlfriend, because mind you, I m moved to a new town. I know nobody. Mm. And the first people I met were other moms who were married. So I just knew married people. And so I just felt like total, like I had the scarlet letter on. I didn't know what to do. I, I still had like, really, I had no game. I didn't know how to flirt and which is what I teach people nowadays. So again, like all the stuff that I was taking notes on back then, <laughs> I had to do the hard way. And so what happened is she showed up, I, I talked to her on the phone and she shows up for the first time and she was decked out to the night. This is the first time I realized how important like style was in terms of attraction, right? Okay. So she, now she's a beautiful woman, but it wasn't just that. It was how she showed up. You like the way she was walking and she had this long blonde hair and she had these heels on and she kind of, you know, like clicked as she walked. And I'm just like staring at her. And here I am in my oversized black clothes, flats on, had probably stains on me from, you know, my baby throwing up on me. Like it was clearly night and day from this woman. So we go to the bars for the first time. And I'm like, wow, people my age go to bars still? Like there's still a single scene, right? And so um, I, I saw, and I just watched her that night. And there was this moment where we're sitting at the bar and she looks across cute guy. And she's like, see that guy over there? I'm like, that young guy? He's like, that guy is so young. She goes, I don't care. And she takes, now this is when I learned about body language. She takes one look at him. She looks down. She looks up again. And I kid you not, the guy was like at our side within like five minutes. I'm like, oh, she's magic. <laughs> yeah. And seriously, I'm like, how did she do that? But really, and, and this is what I teach today is that I, I realized it wasn't just the clothes, it was her confidence, it was the body language. And so when I work with people, if, if they're able to do an intensive with me, I do so much work on body language and how people you know, move through an environment and how they communicate and interact with the world. It's, it's so important. So um, that is definitely like one moment. I, again, I have so many like mistake stories, but really that for me was the catapult of what, you know, I use to help people today. Oh, it's, it's kind of exciting to hear you talk about somebody that you looked at as a role model when I'm certain all of our viewers are looking at you as their role model. So it's definitely paying it forward. And now you've become this icon that people look to, to be able to become their best selves and to have that kind of confidence that you can help instill them with. Now, what about the person who's resistant, who says to you, yeah, mm -hmm. but I can't wear that. Yeah, but now I'm, I'm uncomfortable with that. I want to stay in my mousy brown color. Well, actually that happens probably 90% of the time that I work with people because I mean, look, that's why they're coming to me, right? Like they're, they're, they're stuck in a certain pattern or ways or clothes and they're trying to get unstuck. So we all want to go back to what we're used to. We all want to go back to our comfy cocoon as I call it. Right. Yeah. Because, and, and I, and what I say about that is I said, we can stay here if you want, but that's not what, it's going to create change. You have to get uncomfortable. You have to get uncomfortable in order to change. So I always tell people that little thing that you feel in your stomach, that, that like restlessness, that anxiety, that resistance, that pull, run towards it, not away from it. Cause that means you're shifting. That means you're changing. And so, you know, it's looking at that. Kim, do you tell yeah. this to people when you first meet them? Do you say, my job is to help you become uncomfortable and go towards the new dimension of yourself? Or how do you frame it so that they're ready and prepared for those moments where it means shedding the old skin and moving into a new, a new chapter of their lives? Well, I mean, I actually think it goes back to what you talked about and what you teach is that emotional safety. Like, I, I really think that 
having to start with people with their story, to ha have a true understanding where they come from is the only really, for me, place to start. That's why I always hop on calls before I have people. I don't just quote people package and say, oh, just, you know, work with me. I can't work that way because we are all so unique. We're all, we all have different journeys that shape us. So that, that resistance, that pull is usually coming from a, a place of where they came from. So once I have an understanding of that, people are able to really like be more open and suggest, you know, change. I, there's a story that I often tell with this, and it's a beautiful example because after I work on the outside, then I go inside, right? And so then I work on raising emotional intelligence and teaching people how to manage and express their feelings. And that's the therapist in me, right? And then I take it to the streets and I, that's the third ingredient is raising their social IQ and, and really helping people manage their relationships, interact with the world. And that's where flirting comes in. Just so you know. So the woman that comes to mind that, you know, just what you were asking about, probably one of the most profound stories I had was um, she called me up. She hadn't been dating for 25 years, right? At 25 years. And she'd been married for a long time. She got to that place where she was completely fed up scared to death. And she said, Kim, I, I don't even know what I'm doing, but here's my credit card. You know, she, so she flew out here and we did everything. We did the whole formula. We did the therapy, the coaching, the shopping, the photo shoot, you name it. But what I realized when she got here is how much she was giving her power away, how, how low her self-esteem was, how like her confidence was just on the floor. But when it was time to go shopping after we had that emotional space for her that she felt safe with, I said, okay, now it's time to go shopping. Started from the outside. Fine. Yeah. So she's looking at me and all of a sudden the tears start going down her face. And she said, Kim, there's something I have to tell you. And I said, what's that? And she said, well, I, I haven't looked in the mirror in like, I can't even remember. I said, you, you haven't looked in the mirror. She's like, yeah, I, I cover up all my mirrors at home. I said, okay, well, thank you for telling me, but it's okay. I'm holding your hand. We're going to still walk through this department store. So she's walking through and she's looking at the mannequins and she's like, I can't, just like you said, I can't be like this. There's no way I can wear this, you know, that. And so I said, I get this, but I want you to do me one favor. I want you to put this jacket on and I want you to put these boots on and I want you to twirl around and give me five seconds in the mirror, just five. That's all I'm asking. And so she puts it on and she twirls around. She looks in the mirror and it's like three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, it kept going. She's just staring at herself. Tears are going down again. And she mumbles, oh my God, Kim, I've never seen myself so beautiful. And it was like, and then I start crying, you know, like we had this like moment, right? And I'm thinking to myself, God, you know, if I was a therapist and she was sitting in my office, I probably would have done some cognitive therapy thing, but it was so much more powerful for her to just see herself this way. It's profound. Right? It's see profound herself. Information, you know, I mean, right then you're the fairy godmother and you have actually the wand and have her see her transformation in three dimensions in front of you, in front of the store, in front of all the salespeople, whoever, the customers. But that's pretty profound. That's like Walt Disney. You know, you are you are the fairy godmother. <laughs> it's so funny you said that because when I do, like, I, I speak a lot when I do talks, I, I have a magic wand and I start with a story as, as the fairy. That's so funny you said that. Um, see how good you are? You, you're so good. Um, no, but you, what's really interesting about this story is that, like, you would – like, like my story, like all my clients, it seems almost airy fairy and a little bit of hocus pocus. It's like how, how can a dress or a lipstick or something like change somebody's life? But what happened is what happens to most people. And that is like a domino effect that happens. So what, what this woman, I created a monster basically. Now, after that, she was skipping through the store. She was trying things on with the door open. I mean, this is a woman who had all these like body shame things going on. 
She goes to the photo shoot. She can't believe how gorgeous she looks in the photo shoot. She goes back home. She starts dating up a storm. And the, the ending of this happy fairy tale is that she ended up meeting a fantastic guy and they're still together today. Oh, so it's, it's, it does it's, sound... It sounds very, very, right? But, but, but it wasn't just that moment. It was a moment that pivoted her into something that she needed so that she could go inward, so that she could make change and put herself into action. So I just think that this is fabulous what you do. And the world is blessed to have you in it and making such a difference in people's lives. It's just profound. So uh, I know that I'm taking up a lot of your time and I know that you have a lot of demands on it. So I don't want to stretch you anymore or give you any more stress, but I really, I want you to say your website again, how people can find you. And I want to, I want to thank you for your time, your energy, your passion, your charisma, and the incredible service that you're doing for men and women around the world to be able to be their best selves and to show Thank you. Thank you so much. And and thank you for holding the emotional safety and space to have this conversation, honestly, because you, you made it so easy for me to share that. And I always say like that vulnerability, the the way that we show up and we really express ourselves and honor that, that that's, that's when we connect, that's when we attract things, you know? And so I want to thank you. And yeah, you can go to my website. It's probably the easiest way to find me, seltzerstyle.com. And you can get that, you know, free body type booklet if you want to at my website. And I'm happy to provide the link for your listeners. You can also listen to my podcast, The Charisma Quotient, on iTunes as well. Oh, that's fabulous. Thank you so, so much for being with us today. And um, I just look forward to the next time we get to connect because you are so very special and continue to do the brilliant work that you're doing with people. I love it. Oh, thank you. Yes, let's play again for sure. (laughs) Great. Okay, so um, I'm going to, let's see if I can get this straight here. Um, So this is Cherie Carter-Scott with my podcast. Go to my website, drcherie.com. That's D-R-C-H-E-R-I-E dot com. And when you're there, also go and check out my Facebook page. Same thing, drsheree.com, Dr. Sheree Carter Scott. Love to see you. And my job is to bring you some of the best of the best. And Kim today was really fabulous. And I really think that if you can learn her charisma, the confidence that she helps you find, the colors, the cuts, the confidence, all those pieces put together, you're just going to show up as your very best set, self from the outside in and the inside out. Thanks again. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye.